Alright, we're back out here at one of my favorite places, Padre Island National Seashore. And I came out fully expecting to have uh, pretty much all brown water, but it's only about half brown, so that's good. Let's see what we can do. Alright, here's the rig I'm going on with the big rod. It's just your standard fish finder rig. Uh, circle hook up to a swivel and a sliding, uh, what is this called? A sliding sinker thingy. <laughs> and I'm just gonna put a chunk of, a chunk of whiting on this. I'm not gonna go crazy with the size today. I wanna keep my options open. A little modest a little chunk here, especially since I'm using a smaller hook. All right, let's go chuck this puppy out there. Open for some big fishies. Or medium, some medium fishies would be good too. All right, let's do it, Whiting Chunk. Go out there and do good things. All right, folks, everything is going wrong today. Now a dang seagull took my rest of my whiting for bait. So we gotta catch another one. It's a struggle today, but we're not giving up. We still got time. I'm getting back, the weight just pulled, so we might, have something messing with it. Look at that, we had a freaking ladyfish on the whole time. How about that, dude? Oh, man. Hey, that's good bait, though. Hey, that's some good luck right there. My, things might be changing. Things are looking up, things are looking up. This is a good little ladyfish. You're gonna make some good cut. Cut bait. Yeah, ladyfish. I wonder if it washed away right here. I'd be pretty sad. You're not getting away, dude. Got a little largemouth bass here. It's a good little, that's about a, that's about a 12 pound bass right there. All right, here we go, a chunk of ladyfish. See if anyone wants that. Here it is. Oh my God, that was even worse. But well, we're gonna leave it. All right, finally got the medium rod set up. We're going with a double drop rig here. And here's a little trick you can do with cut bait and fish bites put the put the cut bait on first and then you put a fish bite on after the cut bait like that and that's gonna do two things you're gonna get the scent from that cut or from that fish bite and more importantly this is gonna help keep the cut bait on a lot better because this is not is really hard to get off uh, the barb so it's gonna stick on there really well all right, we finally got all three rods up and running, and let's see what the surf's got. Come on, surf, show me what you got. Woo! I just had a close encounter, boys. There was a stingray that close to me. Took one step and he took off. Thank God, dude. There's was a big boy, too. About that big. You know, it makes a lot of sense that there is a stingray really in close, because just earlier I was saying how many, uh, how many of those crabs are around, and those string stingrays will glide right over the crabs and eat them up. So that's probably why I think he was in close like that. We got something on the medium rod. Stay on there. Oh, it's still on. Oh, it's kind of big. It's kind of big. Famous last words. You have a, oh, a lady. Big lady. Holy cow, that's a huge one. These are some big ladyfish out here. Okay, whoa. Let's see how fast he takes off. Not that fast. He probably used all his energy already. Oh, there's one. Little lady. Little lady. Woohoo! Man. Crazy. Holy cow. Texas tarpon, boys. Woohoo! All right, you just want to be careful when you're uh, unhooking these guys. Oh. See ya. All right guys, just saw another stingray. It was right here, this deep. That's about two inches. They are definitely coming up here to feed on those, on those crabs. So, whoo, whenever I see those crabs, I'm gonna be wary of stingrays. Especially when the sun's low, they definitely feel more comfortable coming in closer. So, all right, so we're, since I saw all these crabs, I feel like there's gonna be some redfish and black drum coming in here pretty close. So I'm gonna throw some uh, 
some crab fish bites. Hopefully something will take my offering. Wow, that was a black drum right there. I saw his back. These fish are coming in here shallow. So I'm gonna give it a really close cast. Right there, that's perfect. I already got one on instantly with that super short cast. I think it's a black drum. How cool is this, dude? Fishing about five inches of water. That is awesome. Let's keep it on. Look at that, that's the, that is the thickest black drum. Ugh. Holy cow. I knew I saw one of these guys. Look at that fat black drum, man. I knew I, knew I saw these guys uh, coming up in close on those crabs and those coquina shells. Look how fat he is. All right, let's get this guy back to the water. Woo, black drum, baby. Black drum, baby. See if I can show you what all this stuff's feeding on. If I can catch one. Yeah, got it. Let go, let go of, let go of the net, buddy. The people want to see you. Ah, he got me. That kind of hurt. Yeah, bite, bite the rubber part. Stop, stop, buddy, stop. Stop. There you go. <laughs> all right, here's a little guy that's causing all these fish to come in here. There's a ton of these out here, and those black drum will come eat the littler ones of these, and also those stingrays are coming up. Uh, these are speckled swimming crabs. They're actually really pretty. Right, let's get, let this guy back out there. And these guys are up here because they like to feed on these coquina shells and whatever else they can find. And they burrow real, real well into the sand. There he goes. Wrong way, buddy, wrong way. Man, I took one little swipe and look at all these fish I caught. These look like little pumps, but they may just be a different, smaller species. That's crazy. I'm, I'm assuming they're coming in shallow here to find some invertebrates to eat. Otherwise, I have no idea what they're eating because they can't eat these coquina shells, they're too small. <laughs>